Good morning, beloveds. Welcome once again to the Little Baptist Church webpage connection. We hope and trust that you will enjoy the worship experience this morning, and we welcome you to tune in and be a part of us each and every time we come your way. We pray that you'll be blessed and uplifted from this experience on today. Thank you.
This morning we want to invite our attention to the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 7 of the gospel of St. Matthew, verses 1 through 6. And this morning we'll be reading from the New Living Translation of God's Word, the New Living Translation of Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is a standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck that's in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? You are a hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste or don't throw away what is holy to the dogs. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. And I want to use a subject this morning. Don't mess up your prayer life. Don't mess up your prayer life. Don't mess up your prayer life. My brothers and my sisters, I give a testimony this morning when I say I truly believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the power of prayer. Ever since I was a small boy, I was well indoctrinated into believing that there is a God who sits high and there is a God who looks low. And that that same God is available for me to talk with 24 hours a day. Seven days a week. 52 weeks a year and 12 months within a year. Yes, I believe, I believe in the power of prayer. In fact, the first prayer that I learned to say was a simple prayer. Jesus wept. Amen. Jesus wept. Amen. And then I learned another prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And then my prayer got a little longer. It said, Bless mama, bless daddy, bless my dog, bless my neighbors and friends. In Jesus' name, amen. And as I've grown older and matured in years and in the faith, I realize now that prayer is a much more complex conversation than it was when I was a child. The Apostle Paul may have said it best when he said, when I was a child I thought as a child, I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. 
Yes. I believe in prayer. Yes. Yes. And as I've gotten older, I now have learned that sometimes my prayers are not answered in the way that I want them to be answered. Because sometimes God says no. And sometimes my prayers are not answered in the way that I want them to is because God sometimes says not yet. And then there are times that my prayers are not answered because the biggest obstacle, the biggest roadblock, the biggest hindrance to my prayers being answered is myself. I put myself between God and prayer. I block my blessings sometimes because I put self before myself. In other words, God takes into account our actions. He has not separated our words from our deeds. God has not dissected our actions from our requests. For God is able to do exceedingly fantastic things in our lives. But sometimes we have the tendency to get in the way. Sometimes we have the tendency to try to take over God's business by circumventing what could have been by our own selfish actions. And so the Lord has led me this morning to remind us, don't mess up your prayer life. No, no, don't, don't mess up your prayer life. God has the ability to put you at the very top of the penthouse. But the problem is that you won't do right in your own house. Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah. God has the ability to grant you higher positions in life. A greater responsibility. But the problem is that our schedules are too crowded to include God. Oh, I wish I had a witness. And, and so in our text, uh, the first six verses of Matthew in chapter 7 show us how we can mess up our prayer life. First point, don't be a judge. Don't be a judge. Jesus addresses a character flaw that many people have. They go around and judge other people. But Jesus says in two words, judge not. Now the word for judge in the Greek language is krino. And that word krino draws the picture of someone who forms an opinion of another person or forms an opinion of something that usually is unfavorable. Crino or judge in the Greek means that an individual is forming an opinion of someone else. Whether you just met that individual or you known them for years, you just make an opinion. You give your opinion. No matter how good that individual may be or what you may know of that individual, you decide yes, according to your opinion that that individual ain't nothing. That that individual is not worthy. So you look down upon him or her in spite of the reality of who they are. Don't mess up your prayer life by judging, by pointing a finger at other folk. 
just because they didn't go to the same school you went to. Judge them. Just because they didn't grow up in the same neighborhood you grew up in. Judge them. Just because they didn't pledge the same sorority or fraternity you did. Judge them. Just because they don't make as much money as you do. Judge them. Just because they don't do or go to the same church as you attend. Judge them. Just because they don't talk the way you think they ought to talk. Judge them. Jesus says as you judge someone, God will judge you the same way. And if you pronounce judgment on someone else, and if you do things against someone else, or try to drag their name in the mud, or try to hurt them in the street, or hurt them in the business place, or even hurt them in the church, you'll wind up being punished uh, like you punish somebody else. And so Jesus says, judge not. Don't you try to be a judge. For God is the real, ultimate, and righteous judge. Yeah, yeah. My brothers and sisters, don't mess up your prayer life. And secondly, Jesus says to us, don't be a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. In verse 5, Jesus calls people hypocrites. That word hypocrite in Greek again is hypocrites, which means to wear a mask like an actor, to be like an actor on a stage, to appear to be one thing when you have ulterior motives, yes, to be a counterfeit, yes, to be fake, to be phony, well, to be two-faced. Don't be a hypocrite. Yeah, yeah. The Message Bible puts it this way. Don't pick on people. Don't jump on their failures. Don't criticize their faults. Unless, of course, you want the same treatment. That critical spirit has a way of boomeranging. What goes around comes around. It's easy to see a smudge, uh, the Message Bible says, on your neighbor's face. And to be oblivious to the ugly sneer on your own face. Do you have the nerve to say, let me wash your face? When your face is distorted by contempt, the Message Bible says, well, if you are, this is the whole traveling roadshow mentality all over again. You're playing a holier-than-thou part instead of just living out your part. Wipe that ugly sneer off your face. And you might be fit to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. Yes, all right. That's what the Message Bible says. In other words, don't be a hypocrite. Yes, First, Jesus says, don't judge. Secondly, Jesus says, don't be a hypocrite. And lastly, in this seventh chapter of Matthew, the first six verses, Jesus says, be careful with holy things. Be careful with holy things. He's just not talking about the communion table. He's not, just not talking about the sanctuary. He's just not talking about the hymn book or the Bible. He's just not talking about taking the Lord's Supper. Yes, we ought to be careful about how we approach the spiritual aspect of our religion. But Jesus is talking about something 
far deeper. He's talking about people in the kingdom. Don't allow your holiness to be given to the dogs and the hogs. He says don't give it out to the dogs and don't talk them out to the hogs. Don't mess up your prayer life. Oh my brothers and sisters you got to protect what God has given you. You got to put God's word in your heart. You got to keep praise on your lips. You got to guard your mind. You got to be careful who you share yourself with. If God has given you a voice to praise him, you need to take care of your voice. If God has given you a mind to teach his word, you need to guard your mind. If God has given you joy to share with others, you need to protect your joy. Don't mess up your prayer life. But give God the glory. He woke us up this morning. Give God the glory. He started us on our way. Give God the glory. He put bread on our tables. Give God the glory. He put a roof over our heads. Give God the glory. Strength in our bodies. Give God the the glory. He put joy in our hearts. Give God the glory. Salvation in our souls. Give God the glory. Love in our hearts. Give God the glory. Peace in our souls. Give God the glory. Don't let your prayer life be wasted. Give God the glory. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you all the way through this life. All the way through that experience. All the way in your faith. And then we will receive the blessing of the Lord that we're looking for. For God is and God will bless you as you bless him. Don't mess up your prayer life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all of these things will be added unto you. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God keep you. Don't mess up your prayer life. Hallelujah.
Thank you, my beloveds, and all of our friends who have been able to share with us this morning. We hope and trust that you have been spiritually enriched, that your spirit is enhanced, and that you are fully committed more to serving the Lord in all that we do. Many of you have asked how you might continue to support this ministry, and we're happy to announce that we have uh, implemented uh, some alternative ways of giving and supporting this ministry, cash app, and of course, the traditional way of mailing in your gifts or bringing them by the church office. In a manner that you choose to give, we will certainly appreciate and we pray that we will be better in your sight and glorious in the sight of Almighty God. Thank you very much. Thank you, my beloveds and our friends for sharing our Little Baptist Church Connection broadcast on today. We hope that you've been inspired, uplifted, and of course, we hope that you gain greater spiritual strength as we face these unpredictable times. We ask that you will join us again real soon, and as always, please watch God change things.